Hello folks, how are you guys doing today? In this video, I am going to tell you everything you need to know about making a Geometry Dash boss fight. I know I have done this topic before, but that video wasn't really informative, so I am recreating it. And I can't use text to speech in this video because of YouTube's new policies, which I think is kind of stupid. Anyways, here's the tutorial, I hope you guys enjoy. First you can create a new level, but if you already created one, you can use that if you want to. Once you're in your level, you can change the background color and ground color. I personally choose black because it's easier to see the outlines of objects. Once you have done that, place a few blocks down. This will act as a base for your cannon. Do not decorate it yet. Select all of the blocks and set it to group 1 or any free group you have. Now let's start making the beam. Go to another layer, you can place these objects down to make a simple beam, or copy what I am doing. If you already made the beam and you are good to go, go to this timestamp if you want to skip this part. But if you would like to copy, don't skip. Now that we have our beam ready, select all of it and set it to group 1 and 2.
Now go to a new layer and place spikes or any kill block along the beam. This will act as a hitbox. Once you have done that, select all of it and set it to group 1 and 3. Go back to layer 0 and place an object at the back of the cannon. Set the object to group 1 and 4. Now that we have all our groups done and sorted, we can move on to the triggers. I will put every group and its function at the top left of the screen. Now time for the triggers. Select the alpha trigger and drag it to the start of the level. Set it to group 2 and change the fade time and opacity to 0. Copy and paste the trigger and set it to group 3. The purpose of the alpha trigger is to make the beam and the hitbox invisible. Select the toggle trigger and set it to group 3. Do not activate it. The purpose of the toggle trigger is to disable the hitboxes when playtesting. Now when you playtest, the beam and the hitboxes won't be visible and you can fly straight through. Go to the old layer and select all of it, then move it up a little bit. Place a move trigger down and set it to group 1, move time to 9999, and enable lock to player X. Now your cannon should move with you. Place another move trigger down and adjust it so the cannon moves down to your screen when playtesting. I am going to speed this up because this part is going to be different for all of you. Now it should look something like this. Now let's make the cannon shoot. Place down the alpha trigger, set it to group 2, change the fade time to 0.2, then change the opacity to 1. Place down the toggle trigger, set it to group 3 and activate it. Now when you play test, the cannon will shoot and it should kill you. Here's what it looks like in game. Place another alpha trigger down, set it to group 2 and change the opacity to 0. Finally, place the toggle trigger down and set it to group 3 and do not activate it. Now it should look something like this. You are pretty much done, but if you wanted to have more aesthetic, here's the next step. Now let's make the cannon have recoil. Place the rotate trigger down, set the center ID to 4, set the target ID to 1, set the degrees to any positive number you want, and choose your easing option. Now when you play test, the cannon will rotate when it's being fired. But if the rotation is too high, you can always lower down the degrees. Add a move trigger, set it to group 1, set the X axis to 10 and choose your easing option. I personally choose back out because it looks like a recoil. Copy and paste the move trigger to the other side of the shooting part, change the X axis to negative 10 and choose back in back out. Copy and paste the rotate trigger and just do the same thing we did with the move trigger. Now when you play test, the cannon will look like it has recoil. Now time for some finishing touches. Just add some pulse triggers throughout the shooting part. I am going to skip this part because it's pretty straightforward.
Now when you play test, it should look something like this. Now you can just add some background effects if you want to. Let's play test it and see how it looks. Pretty cool, isn't it? Now that's the shooting variable done. Let's make the design of the cannon. Now let's come up with a design for our cannon. Go back to the cannon layer. We are going to use non-collidable objects for this. Do not use solid objects because that will interfere with the gameplay. I am going to speed this part up because you are going to go your own way for this. Make sure you use different color channels, different opacities, and a little touch of blending. And also use HSV for some shading and depth. There is one thing that most people do wrong and that is not using the layers in the orders. Sometimes I make this mistake too but please make sure you use it. If you don't use this, the objects from your design might overlap with each other and you don't want that to happen. Here is the rest of the speed build. Go to this timestamp if you want to skip this.
If you have added anything onto the beam, make sure you select all of it and put it to group 1 and 2. And last of all, select all of the cannon and put it to group 1 only. Your final product should look like this. Well, that's it guys. I hope this tutorial helped. If you like this video, make sure you press the like button and subscribe for more videos. Make sure to check out Dolphy's videos. This video was inspired by them. My boy Smash Bros 439 got more than 100 subs and then lost 40 subs, bringing him back to around 90 subs, which is pretty darn messed up. So make sure you guys check his channel out too. So that's it folks, I'm Fovalace, see you guys later, peace.